Good morning, everybody. Um, happy Sunday. Today we're going to go and do a short hour ride um, just around the neighborhood or just around the area, keeping it short because, as you know, it is winter and it's pretty cold out. So we try to just, we're just going to try to limit the time that we're out there. I know it's only just an hour ride, but Jason got a bike fit yesterday and he trying out the new saddle, uh, the demo saddle that the bike shop lent to him to see how, how he feels in it. It said that there were some wind gusts of 30 miles an hour, but I don't know if sometimes it says that and it does, it doesn't really, we don't really feel it, but I do see the leaves outside kind of swaying. So there was some breeze out there. able to catch hold on to you uh i'm not like going fall hard but at least i was able to yeah able to stay with you ride on the washboard section of this road. Climbing still feels good. Like when seated, doing seated climbs. Yeah, um, actually it feels better because uh, you know how like when you're climbing you kind of lean forward? Yeah. So like before I used to get a lot of pressure right. in the perennial when, wow. I, when I was climbing. Yeah. And, uh, I don't have that as much. Oh, okay. Or I, I should say I don't have it at all. I don't feel any pressure in the set in the in the journey. Yeah. back here inside the house now that ride was um, it was fun but really cold out there and I'm glad that we did get to spend a little bit of time outside because we do miss riding um, being indoors as you guys know uh, cooped up inside it does take a toll on you and you're well we have this window to look out and wishing that we were out there. So we were out there and an hour was actually just in a good enough, good amount of time to spend outdoors and just get some fresh air, get some vitamin D and then come back inside and do more work. So I'm actually um, down here in our basement and uh, I'm just going to do some strength training uh, just a few strength training efforts probably going to take me about 30 minutes um, upper body stuff like arms and core uh, just kind of work those areas uh, and I actually don't think I mentioned to you guys or I mentioned last time that um, I wanted to share some of my New Year's resolutions so let me go ahead and do that so one of the things that I struggled with in the past is um, my weight and I'm at the point where well I was at the point where I was really I kind of let myself go especially during the whole lockdown and not that it affected us in any way um, I mean it did have an impact on us where I ended up working from home a lot of times and so because of that I actually you know I had a routine and kind of broke those routines and kind of moved away from it. And so 
um, I kind of went a little, a little bit more lax with my eating habits and which kind of impacted just my overall um, weight loss uh, goal or I guess at the time my weight maintenance. And so um, I did gain some weight back, which kind of disappointed me. And I, I, I actually sort of knew that I was going to uh, gain the weight back. And so for the, I know I'm a little late on this, but for my New Year's resolution is I am looking to uh, lose weight. And Jason and I um, have decided to uh, come up with a challenge just to hold ourselves accountable because he's looking to lose some weight as well. Um, and so what we're looking to do is hopefully for me, my goal is to lose three pounds by February 28th, which is the end of February. And Jason is looking to lose five pounds by that time. Where we are at with that, we started in Jan early January. I think it was a week after um, the New Year's, a week after New Year's Day. And so we figured like, let's go ahead and and, and start this off and figure out how we can do this. And uh, what I've been doing is I have been cutting calories, uh, counting a lot of my calories actually too. So in order to cut the calories, you have to count the number of calories that you take in. There's a whole like logistics behind it that you don't wanna cut too much uh, because I found that the first week I actually cut too much and I was feeling really sick and just dizzy and, uh, lightheaded. And that is because, you know, due to the fact that I cut too much calories. So I found this website um, called fatcalc.com and it allows you to calculate your total daily energy expenditure, which is TDEE, based on your activity levels throughout the day while you're at work and how often you work out throughout the week. My goal is to be at a two to 300 cal caloric deficit per day. Now, there have been days where I have actually been more than 200 calories, sometimes even more than 500 calories, just because I was burning a lot of calories from the workout. Now, what makes it uh, easy is that the calories that I take in on a daily basis pretty much stays the same, especially with breakfast. I actually, well, breakfast mainly, it actually stays the same. I have my recovery shake after each workout, and I also have the same breakfast, and I've tallied up the number of calories from my breakfast, and so that makes it a lot easier. And I also actually started, or I signed up for a subscription to Home Chef. This is not at all an advertisement for Home Chef. I am not sponsored by them. I'm, I'm nowhere near at a point where I can be sponsored by a, a brand. And what has really appealed to me with Home Chef is that um, you can select what type of dietary restrictions you have. And so for me, I put in calorie conscious and then... Um, it would just give me meals within, you know, that were a little bit more calorie friendly. I've had Home Chef for two weeks now, a little over, yeah, about two weeks now. This I'm going in my third week and I've really enjoyed it. I've actually really liked the, enjoyed the foods that I've cooked and um, I have not had any dishes or any meals that I dislike the taste of. And it makes me feel like I am actually a chef. I don't know. I just, it's just fun to be able to cook foods again. That's really what I wanted to talk to you guys about is just my struggle with weight loss and um, my plan for losing weight in a, in a sustainable way. And I 100% agree that weight is a uh, delicate thing to talk about in sports because there are a lot of people who suffer from body dysmorphia. Sometimes it could be a tricky thing to talk about or it can be uh, a delicate thing to talk about um, because we have to be very sensitive with other people's um, outlook on their body. My primary reason for losing weight is so that I don't have a whole lot to carry when I'm doing climbs and I would like to improve on my climbing. 
So you guys are probably dying to hear from Jason on how his uh, bike fit went. So I will get him on and he can talk about how his bike fit went and what they did and what changes they made to his bike. So how did it go? How was the, uh, the bike, the bike fitting? Fit? Yeah. Uh, it was cool. It was a good experience. Uh, my first time doing a bike fit and the main reason I decided to do it is because I've been having saddle discomfort for quite a while and I've tried a few different saddles and just can't seem to get one you know none of them seem to work I was having a lot of pressure in the perineum area the soft tissues and on some of our longer rides I was you know, say rides that are three hours or more, I would start feeling some numbness down there, which is obviously not a good thing. So I thought it was time to get on top of this and do something about it. So I, uh, I went to get a, a bike fit at a nearby local bike shop uh, called Bethel Cycle Works in Bethel, Connecticut, which is right next to Danbury. And they were, uh, they were really nice and, and helpful. Um, as far as the, the fitting itself was concerned, um, you know, I, I told them about my saddle issues and they said that the, the root cause of the saddle discomfort is probably more so my positioning on the bike than it is the saddle itself although the saddle can play you know a role also uh so the adjustments that they ended up making during the fitting process were first adjusting my cleats uh so they angled the the cleats so that my toes could point out just very slightly. And that's in order to allow my toes to, my knees to track in line with my toes while I'm pedaling. Uh, also, the right cleat got moved uh, back a little bit because I think my right leg is longer or I have some sort of imbalance between my I have, I have a definitely an imbalance between my left and right legs, and I'm not sure if it's the, the length of the, the, the legs or could also be my, my knee injury on the right side that was causing me to, it still does cause me to favor my left. And what was happening was while I'm pedaling, my, uh, my hips were kind of rocking up and down quite a bit. So they wanted to get that more, you know, leveled off or stabilized. Uh, so they made that cleat adjustment. Uh, the next thing they did was to move my saddle forward uh, quite a bit um, so that when I pedal, I can activate the glutes more and kind of push backward as I'm pedaling instead of just straight up and down. They also angled, I guess, I didn't even know that this, it was like this, but my, my, my old saddle was angled down a little bit. And they said that that can actually indirectly cause you to put more pressure on your perineum because your pelvis will feel like it's sliding forward. So to adjust for that, your pelvis tends to to uh, posteriorly tilt, you know, kind of like tucking the tail in kind of motion. And that uh, also rounds your lower back a little bit. And also drop the, drop the stem down probably by about an inch or two. So anyway, they moved it down a little bit. It wasn't drastic. They didn't move it down all the way, um, but they wanted to start with that. 
uh, just moving it down a little bit. And also they, uh, they move the, the hoods back, back a little bit and also angle them outward so that, uh, cause my, this, they said my, my, my hoods are a little bit too wide for me, ideally. Uh, and what was happening is I was kind of going like this, uh, with the elbows out. So in order to try to keep me in a better line, you know, from hand to hand going all, all the way up the arm, they angled the hoods out just, just very slightly. Those were the main adjustments that they made. And, um, after doing those things, they tried putting a new saddle on, um, which is, I'm actually testing it out right now. I hooked it up to the bike erg, tried to get the, uh, the bike erg dimensions to be similar to what my road bike is currently set up for. Um, so the saddle that I'm on right now is a ISM. I think the, the model is PL 1.0 and it's one of these, um, pressure relief channel saddles that, uh, has, it almost looks like, you know, two, two points or two fingers. So it's like totally separated in the middle. So there's really no, uh, your perineum is basically just sitting in the air. It's not even like touching anything. Um, and the only place so far, I, I really like the saddle and, uh, on our ride outside today, I mean, it was only a little over an hour ride, but, um, I didn't feel any pressure in the perineum. It was the only place that I, and still the only place that I'm feeling pressure now is the sit bones. And the bike fitter said that that's the way it should be. And that with my first few rides, I might get some soreness from the sit bone pressure, but that should go away. It shouldn't be become a chronic problem like the numbness that I was having in the perineum. When they did this fitting, they were of course taking a video of me so that they could analyze it. And then they showed me the before and after, and I could see a difference with the before uh, video, even though my seat, po uh, I'm sorry, my stem was a little bit higher in relation to my seat post. I was, I actually looked like I was hunching over more with my lower back. I had a little rounding in the lower back and looked like I was kind of reaching for the, for the, uh, the hoods. So now after the fitting, my torso is at a more aggressive angle or the flexion is all coming from my hip flexors and my upper body is just staying in a pretty straight, stable position. And it feels pretty natural. I feel pretty relaxed in this position. Doesn't feel like I'm hunched over or, or reaching for the, the, uh, reaching for the handlebars. So my first, uh, first impression is good. Of course, I'll have to keep trying out this saddle, especially on longer rides because today that we did like an hour and 20 minutes outside. I'm probably going to do another hour and a half or so inside here. I thought about just keep continuing to ride outside, but it was pretty cold today. Um, so I opted to, to end the ride the same time that Joy did. And I'm just going to do some extra, some extra time on Zwift here. So far, I'm happy with it. And I'm, I'm glad that I decided to do it. So it's now Sunday, January 24th, and the footage that you saw was shot last week. And after I watched the 
the video of Jason getting a bike fit, I was very impressed with how much he learned from the information that was provided to him by the bike fitter. And so I went ahead and got myself a bike fit as well. So I got my bike fit yesterday and learned a lot about my body and my body positioning and the best way to, the best position to put out the most power. And we'll talk more about that next week since I noticed that this video is getting a bit too long. So until next time, guys, don't forget to enjoy the ride.